By tradition, when a programmer starts work with a new programming language, the first program that you typically write is a simple one that just displays the text Hello World, and that's what I've got here written for C. Just a reminder that if you're using CodeLite, be sure to load the workspace file, that's from here, the workspace file that's applied for this step, which is step two, and that contains several projects, and make sure that the first one, 0, 1 underscore hello world is active, so you select it from this list up here. Now let's look at the code. This looks pretty simple and straightforward. Before looking exactly at how it works, I just want to verify that it runs as expected. I select build and then build and run project. Up pops the terminal and it displays hello world. So there's nothing very interesting or surprising about that. The program itself is just a few lines of code, but if you've never programmed before, or if you've never programmed in C before, what is going on here might not be obvious. So I want to highlight some of the common elements that you see in all your C programs. First of all, the program begins with this statement, hash include, and the name of a file. This is called a header file, a file that ends with .h. I'll explain that later. For now, just bear in mind that stdio.h is a system-wide C file that's supplied with the C compiler, and it's used in most of your programs. It provides a number of functions, a number of capabilities that you'll want to use time and time again. So hash include, the, the character that begins include, is called hash. Some people call it a pound character. Some people call it an octothorpe character. I'm going to call it hash. So this is hash include. That is an instruction to a tool called the preprocessor. The preprocessor processes the file before sending it to the compiler, and the compiler is the tool which compiles the file, changes it into executable machine code that can be run by your hardware. So the preprocessor in this case is told by this hash include to go and look for the specified file stdio.h. The file name is enclosed by these pointy brackets. That is an instruction to look through a certain search path. In this case, what it's telling the preprocessor to do is to look for stdio.h among the standard system files of the C uh, environment. In your own code, you'll often put, instead of these pointy brackets, you put double quotes like that, but I don't want those for this program. I want the pointy brackets. Now, the next section is a function, main, followed by an empty pair of parentheses. Every C program has a main function. It's the place where the program begins. So when your program is run, that's the thing that executes first. It has to be called main, and it has to be followed by a pair of parentheses. There may be something in between those parentheses, which I'll explain in a later video, but I'm keeping this deliberately simple, so I'm just putting an empty pair of parentheses, which indicate that that is the main function. Then there's a curly bracket. Well, in fact, that's the first of a pair of curly brackets. Curly brackets in C mark off blocks of code. Here, there's just one statement, but it could be many, there could be a number of different lines of C code between those curly brackets. In this case, the curly brackets mark the start and the end of the main function. And the contents of the main function are between those curly brackets. Here, the contents are just this one line of code. printf, then a pair of parentheses again, then hello world slash n, inside the parentheses, and hello world slash n is inside a pair of double quotes. That shows that it's a string. It's a string of characters. Uh, in other words, it's a, it's a piece of text, but we refer to it as a string. Now, because it's between the parentheses, that shows that it's being passed as a piece of data, as an argument, we say, to the printf function. The printf function is one of the functions that's supplied 
in stdio.h, which is why I've had to include it at the start of the code file. And printf just receives that string and it prints it. It displays it when the program is run. That's why we saw hello world being displayed in the terminal when I ran the program. The slash n at the end is a special character. It indicates a new line character. It tells printf to put a, a new line at the end of hello world. And finally, there's the semicolon. And the semicolon is a special piece of syntax that marks the end of a statement. So although there are only very few lines of code in this Hello World program, already we've had to start to understand quite a bit of the essential syntax of the C language. And we'll see this syntax repeated time and time again in much more complicated programs that I'll be explaining later in this course.